We're at the tail end of galaxy season now, and truth be told, I wanted to just play around with my red cat in 2600 because I just love the thing. So I've been doing these wide galaxy shots and just kind of playing around and learning the craft and everything else, waiting for things for the red cat to come in to make it super duper red cat, more automation. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, check for that. But today what we're going to do is we are going to play around with this image right here. So this is M81, M82, and a bunch of the integrated Flux Nebula. And we'll uh, go ahead and work on a little bit of processing together. And I'm going to put the data down below to a Google Drive. So maybe you can play with it yourself if you want to. So my name is Chad. This is the Easy Astro Images channel. And we're going to process some data today. So this is uh, kind of like my fifth or sixth time processing this, uh, this data that I have here and things have turned out really good. Now I've done a lot of this wide field kind of stuff this year because I didn't want to take the red cat apart and I've been just kind of like practicing certain things you can see here. We've got the Leo triplet just focusing on things, trying to learn more about masking, this and that. And uh, here's a wide field of uh, M101. Again, more of the same fun things. And you could do little fun things with these. You can crop out certain areas if you want and everything else. Now, with my setup, of course, with the Red Cat and the 2600, you know, it's made for like wide field shooting and not the definitely not the best uh, for galaxies. You know, if we look at the CCD uh, suitability tool here, you can see I am like heavily, heavily undersampled, but it doesn't mean that you're going to get like these awful, horrible images. Now, if you're Mr. Astro Ben pixel processor or Mrs. Whatever, then probably this isn't the way you would want to run your scope. But you know me and our motto here, A-pods just aren't our thing, and I'm not into like trying to impress people on Astro Ben. I'm just here trying to get, let you guys uh, show what we can do and try to get, uh, you know, have some fun with stuff. So let's go ahead and open up the actual uh, first image here, and it will be the main image that I will have down in the description below. And the first thing I want to show you about this image is that um, there's a little bit of an issue for some reason when the stretch and stuff gets pushed, there's going to be a huge, there's a big band that goes across the top of the image here. So you can either try to work around it or you can crop it out or do whatever, you'll kind of see what is happening, um, you know, here when I do things. And I'm just kind of like meeting in the middle and just kind of rolling with it. So the first thing we're gonna do is just a, a basic dynamic background extraction to just get rid of the gradients. And we're just gonna go through and put some extra points uh, here in the middle. Now we already know there's, there's IFN all over the place in here. But this doesn't seem to really hide it or do anything uh, bad with it at all. So we'll just go ahead and get rid of that. And then we will reapply the screen transfer function. And now you can kind of start to see some of that stuff popping out already on the screen. Um, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we'll just go ahead and crop this some. And I'm going to just kind of pull this down to here to kind of eliminate a lot of that banding. I know that's going to show up and this is going to scream at me because I did do the astrometric solver, but I'm not going to do any kind of uh, color calibration or anything like that. Um, just haven't really seen the need to do any of that. So now that we're cropped and everything, uh, the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and run a blur exterminator if you have it. And you can kind of decide for yourself how you want to set this up. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it all at the defaults and drag and drop that. And we're going to get a little bit of sharpening inside of the galaxy. And of course, we're going to get 
our stars are going to be reduced and that's going to look pretty decent we're going to come back to that of course later on now time to stretch this thing now i'll show you um I think James of DSO Imager just did a video and, and he pretty much is on the same path that I'm doing. You know, a lot of times I like to just use something like uh, the Easy Processing uh, Suite, Easy Soft Stretch. And if we do something like this, of course it's gonna do a great draw, job at like stretching everything, um, but it also will have a tendency to kind of like blow out uh, your galaxy cores and everything else. Um, so we'll just basically uh, do it old school here. And um, by I mean old school, we'll use the histogram transformation tool. Uh, but before we do that, let's just go ahead and try to get ahead of the noise. Um, you know, when you're shooting with one shot colors, especially doing this stuff, you're going to pick up a lot of different noise and a lot of different colors and all kinds of craziness as well. So let's open up the histogram transformation and we will reset this tool and open a real time preview. And then we're just gonna start dragging uh, this in and stretching our image. And you can see that uh, as it's pulling over the histogram and stretching everything, you can see that we're still keeping uh, some pretty decent looking stuff there with the galaxies. So it's gonna just kind of be up to you how far you want to push it. Um, you can see that it's really not blowing out the core per se, which is a good thing, um, like the easy processing suite would. But we're also not getting as much of that integrated flux nebula uh, pulled out either. But we can actually take care of that a little bit down the road with like curves and masking. So I think I'm just going to leave that right there and we can always come back to that. And uh, so here is our uh, stretched image. So first thing we're gonna do, just to save some steps down the road, is I'm gonna use a uh, little bit Bill Blanchin's modified SCNR um, process, and we just drag and drop that on here. And that's gonna get rid of our green, and we are pretty good. So we'll go ahead now and just pull the stars out. That way we don't have to worry about those. And then once the stars come out, we're gonna just kind of be left with like this, uh, you know, beautiful starless image here that we're gonna have to play with. And this is where these banding lines are gonna kind of come into, kind of haunt me a little bit here. So we'll put the stars down here. Let's just go to curves and let's start playing around with curves transformation. And let's see what we can do here. So there's the histogram right there. We can see that uh, these values for the galaxy are all the way up there. This stuff down here, of course, is all, all still living on the other side of the histogram. So if we want to pull up some of that integrated flux nebula, we're gonna have to pull up from here and try not to go super crazy yet because we don't want to blow this stuff out. We can recover it and then we'll drop the background down a little bit. And this is uh this is just a balancing act right here. So, you know, just be very careful how you want to do this and we're going to anchor this again and pull that up. I found actually that processing this in uh, Photoshop with the camera raw filter is a really, really great way to pull this stuff out. But I don't want to do that, you know, on with the, you guys here because I don't want to, uh, you know, take you outside of PixInsight and make your life a little bit more difficult. So we can try to tackle this with like masking and stuff. So that's kind of where we're at for right now. Let's make a mask. And I think the first thing we're gonna do is we'll make a range mask and let's see how much of that uh, flux nebula we can pick up. So we can pick up quite a bit of it. We just wanna make sure that we're, it's a balancing act again, like I said, there's just, we're not gonna be able to get all of it without kinda 
introducing and getting ourselves into some problems on some other stuff. So I'm going to just click that down a little bit more. And let's check that out right there and see how that looks like. So we can see that it's doing a pretty good job of getting everything, galaxies, and all that stuff. And I'm just going to blur that a little bit. This is uh, Bill's uh, mask blurring pixel math. So we'll take that mask and I'm going to drop it on like that. And I think the first thing what I want to do is I want to invert the mask and protect as much of that stuff as I can. And we'll just go into curves here. And let's just uh, try to pull the background levels down a little bit so we can kind of create some contrast with that stuff. Now, we can always bring up the overall brightness of everything when we're done by using the histogram transformation. So, you know, don't worry a lot about uh, crushing it a little bit. And then I also want to pull back down on the saturation to make sure that there's no... Uh, background color or anything like that going on in there. So if we uh, hide the mask here for a second, kind of see that is what we are left with. And if we wanted to, let's go ahead and uh, show that again. And then we will invert. And... Now we're gonna be playing with all of these areas here. And this is probably one of the good points where you would wanna take your mask, the range mask here, and maybe take it into uh, kind of like Photoshop. So that way you can kind of focus the mask on one or the other. The trick to this whole image is playing with the integrated flux nebula and not affecting the galaxies uh, back and forth. You can kind of do what I'm doing here and maybe get away with it a little bit. Or you could, like I said, go into Photoshop and tackle certain things first, like the galaxies um, or the, the integrated flux nebula. Um, or you could use like the game script and go after the galaxies first. But we'll just kind of roll with this here and see what we get. So let's open up our curves transformation again. And probably what's going to happen is we're going to start, you know, these are all the way up here. These are already blown out. So we need to do obviously some recovery. But the stuff here is still down here a little bit. So let's try to just give the IFN a little bit of a lift. All right, so that's working out pretty good. And let's do it again. All right, I think I like that. So let's drop that on there. All right. All right, that is good. So let's get uh, let's get rid of our mask, and then let's start working on these galaxies. And then for the galaxies, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use the game script, and we're going to basically just go ahead and add um, three little masks here and create those on the galaxies. And you want to make sure that these are pretty tight because you don't want to affect everything else around them or you're going to get kind of some like borders that are going to look a little goofy and you're going to have to go back in and start adjusting um, things like your uh, background levels and everything or you're going to have kind of like I would say what you would call either halos or reverse halos or something like that. So let's just go ahead and say that's good. And there is our mask that we created to start working on our galaxies. Let's just go ahead and blur those a couple times. And then we will add that over here. 
and then let's see here uh, mask show mask okay so everything else is protected except for the galaxies so let's go ahead and hide that again and let's bring up curves first and we'll bring up the real-time preview and we know that these cores are completely blown out so let's just start dropping this here and you can see that we're we're making a big difference already so let's just give this a couple iterations of just kind of dropping down the brightness and stuff with the curves and i mean you're never going to get it perfect you know so it's kind of just how far you want to push it and how much you want to take out of it um, and be mindful again about the surroundings that you're not taking away uh, from the IFN or anything else. So I'm going to go with that right there. Now, while we're in here, I do want to definitely try to add some saturation uh, to these objects. And you could just kind of work on these one at a time if you want to. You know, James brought that up earlier in his uh, video that I just watched today about, you know, each one kind of has its own characteristics. And I totally, totally agree with that. Um, but for our case here, I'm just going to go ahead and just keep working on all of them one at a time. And you can see that we're pumping in a lot of saturation into these things. And, you know, we're at such a wide field, it really isn't going to matter. So... All right, should do it there. I am pretty good with that. Yeah, pretty good with that. So now we have a mask on. And what we can do is we can have some fun with Blur Exterminator. So if we want to try Blur Exterminator, we're just going to basically do it on this. Now, what you are going to want to do is... There's no stars for Blur Exterminator to work with right now. Now, if you drop it on here, you can actually see that it will work and do something. It'll start kind of correcting and sharpening things up a little bit. You know, if we go back and forth through the preview, you can see that there's just a slight noticeable uh, difference on there. Um, if we wanted to, what we could do is go ahead and set our uh, PSF. And I know I'm usually like around 1.4 to 1.3 on here. And we can see if that does any bit of a better for us. And it's about the same. So we'll go ahead and drop that on there. And that will apply a little bit of, you know, sh poor man sharpening, easy stuff for us to do that we don't have to worry an entire bunch about. So I'm gonna be pretty good with that. The other thing we could do is you could also go back uh, to that preview and we could uh, try running something like uh, HDR multi-scale transform. And of course we want this uh, to be to lightness and you can start playing with your different uh, scaling factors moving up to whether or not you want to work with your smaller structures or your larger structures. And then of course, the number of layers, um, the more you go up, the more subtle of effect um, it's supposed to be. But you know, you can see that it just really depends on what you're, you're trying to get, what kind of effect you're gonna get. You can see how it really crisped up that stuff in the middle. And some would say, you know, hey, that might be looked a little overbaked or whatever. Um, but again, we're at such a crazy pixel scale here and wide field here, not going to notice a whole lot. So I think we'll just go ahead and settle on a seven and, you know, we saw a little bit of change down here, but not a lot. So let's just go ahead and apply that and just be done with it. Yeah, sure. That looks good. I, I'm good with that. Uh, let's, uh, go ahead and remove our mask and, uh, delete our preview. So this is kind of where we're at right now. And, uh, you can, you can go all over with this and do whatever you want to do. It's uh pretty cool. And you know, this is only like 12 hours of data that I was able to pick this stuff up, you know, with the little 51 millimeter scope. 
and uh, 10 minute subs. So it's pretty cool. So we got our stars here now. So stars, I really am all about with these pictures, like pushing this freaking star saturation like way up and then bringing it down, of course, using something like star reduction or the actual scripts or something that we're using. And then, you know, you can make the stars bigger, brighter, whatever, you know, we're doing this wide field stuff. So the whole point is to kind of show off some of these cool looking stars that we captured. So it's okay to just go ahead and make them look a little funky and crazy. So we do got some green in this star right here. Let's see if we run another SCNR, if that kind of clears that up. Yep, sure did. So now let's just make this a stars. And I've got a little pixel math here called stars back, which is uh, the rescreening process uh, for blur for uh, star exterminator. And let's go ahead and apply that. And here is the image thus far. Now from here, some people might want to do some star reduction. Some people might want to do this, do that. I think one thing I want to do is I just want to kind of just kind of brighten everything up a little bit just to kind of, well, it'll, it'll kind of like dehaze that background. Like I don't want so much of a contrast difference uh, back there. I don't, you know, it's, it's going to affect everything that we worked on with the, with uh, the galaxies and stuff, but just having this kind of like dark kind of a shot with a wide field image, you know, I mean, it looks cool, but that's just not really how it looks. You're, you know, when you're zoomed in on a galaxy, you're obviously picking up, uh, you know, way less field of view. So you're picking up less light. So, you know, I'm pretty happy with making these images, you know, a little bit brighter like this. And honestly, this image to me is kind of what I've been going for right now. You know, when I look at these things on the Nina um, framing wizard and I see all these nice, big, beautiful stars. Now it's nice to get rid of the small ones and all that kind of stuff. You know, we could, we could go with the round, a blur exterminator now, again, if we wanted to, um, we can just drop that on there and see what it's going to do, uh, to the image, but I don't think I'm going to like it. I think I like having these big, bold, colorful looking stars, but sometimes it will reduce the other ones. Yeah, there we go. Okay. That looks good and leave these big ones. So you've got these big stars popping out. Um, you've got the, you've got a lot going on here in this composition. Um, probably people would, you know, it could be balanced a little bit more, but you know, there's so much going on and that's just kind of what it is with these. When you start picking up all of this other stuff and unless you're really, really good at processing, you know, you really got to kind of like pick your poison. Like I was saying, uh, earlier or, you know, obviously spend, a lot more time than what we would do here in a quick uh, tutorial to show you how to do something like this. So uh, that is it right there. And let's see, where is my, where was my first pass of this baby? So there's my first pass. And I think my first pass that I did, you can see that a uh, little bit more uh, detail uh, going on in these. Um, you know, I didn't, kind of milk it out a little bit, kind of made it a little bit more subdued. But of course, for YouTube and stuff, something like the image we just did, um, you know, is pretty, pretty pleasing as well and looks, you know, pretty good. So it's kind of pick your poison, which way you want to go with this. But anyway, the data is below. So do exactly whatever you want to do. We are good with that. So just go ahead and process your little hearts out and enjoy and have fun. And that's it, guys. We will talk to you later.